We are moments away from getting started here in these 2A state title games. 6A and 1A both decided yesterday. We'll be handing out hardware in the 2A and 4A later on this afternoon. The throw down to second. And Bobby, what are you looking forward to most in this game? Well, really, it's all about settling the nerves. I mean, we've seen a couple championship games already this weekend. One was decided by timely hitting. Yesterday, of course, Bryant was able to get the big hits against Cabot as they won their first title since 2012. Now, who gets the timely hitting and who makes the fundamental plays? It's, it's, it seems easy to you and I and us watching on television to make that pitch and uh, that, that catch and throw. You know, don't give up cheap runs when there's runner on third. Don't give up those cheapies with a pass ball or a wild pitch. Just make their routine play and make the other team Team beat you and to me that's going to be the key because we see it so many times in a championship game it's those little things those minute details that could cost you a title or possibly win you one clean defense going to be so much more important given the weather with the rain having fallen on the field as we get set for the opening pitch here in the 2A state title and it is a ball on the outside to Annalie Qualls it will be Qualls Cox Thomas leading the way for Riverside all three batters hitting over 400 followed by Katie Ridge, Brooklyn Berry, Claire Womack, Riley Eakins, and Carly Joe Womack. Catches the bottom of the zone for a called strike. Paris McGee rounds out the order for the Riverside Lady Rebels. Command has not been an issue all season long for Allison Edwards. It's 48 walks and 150 innings of work. You can do the math. That's just one free pass for every three innings. That's pretty good numbers. Called a strike on the outside corner. Bobby, you know I rely on you to do all the math throughout these state championship games. My abacus is right here handy. <laughs> I guess if I only have to count to like three, I'll be fine. Edwards, one, two to the leadoff hitter. Swung on and missed for strike three. That's Edwards' game. She works ahead, she works quick. And punch out number 272 on the season, an ERA of below 1.3. It's pretty easy to see why this team has won 24 games in a row. It all comes down to pitching in the circle when you get into the state championship game. To win softball games, you got to have pitching, you got to have hitting. It seems obvious, but it does come down to those facets. Is that one off the outside? It's going to get back to the backstop. Twenty-five and two on the year is Edwards, but she's not unhittable. She has given up 93 hits on the season. She is going to make this Riverside offense attack her. She likes to work quick. She's not, not afraid, not going to back down from these batters. What's the strategy inside the box going up against a pitcher that likes to work quick and attack the strike zone? I, I think you've got to be aggressive early in the count. You have to take that ball, the, the pitch out of the zone, out of the equation. If you know, if you know she's going to come at you early, I would, I would swing early, be aggressive in the count. Kaylee Cox ahead in the count, 2-0 after back-to-back -back pitches out of the hands of Edwards miss. Cox, 442 on the year, six doubles, 25 RBI out of the two hole. It's a very accomplished Riverside offense. 2-0, that misses outside. Now 3-0. If you're Riverside going up against an Allison Edwards, base runner's likely going to be at a premium today. So it doesn't matter how you get on if you're the Lady Rebels. The most important thing is to get on. Yeah, I, I've always been a fan of swing away at 3-0, but this early in the contest, you're likely going to see her, Kaylee Cox, take one, if not two pitches to make Edwards come at her. The 3-0. That stays high. A four-pitch walk issued to Kaylee Cox as Riverside has their first runner of the game. Free passes. That's the easiest way to, to get a rally going or also cause some problems for yourself. The four-pitch walk there for Edwards is rare. I mentioned just 49 free passes issued this season. And what it does is it puts a runner on base for Mackenzie Thomas in the three-hole batting. 456, four home runs, 30 RBI on the year. That's five straight balls out of the hand of Allison Edwards. How much are nerves playing into this, or is this more weather-related, do you think? It could be a little bit of both. I mean, you know, the ball hasn't touched the turf that many times. Do you think it's relatively dry right now? She retired the first batter with a strike, and I think she may be just trying to be a little too fine, not being as aggressive attacking the zone. And when she tries to nibbles the corner, and now she's missed on six straight, and now that's, as you well know, Dora, it starts to become a mental game. You try to overthink it, try to overthrow it, try to maybe guide one into the zone, and. And that's when you run into these streaks of, of missing the strike zone. Now Mackenzie Thomas now a favorable count, 2-0. Look for something good to hit here. 
does get a pitch on the inside corner. It's off the fist, but it's going to find some green. It is down. And now as it skips away, Thomas, or Cox, rather, is headed for third. And so Riverside in business here in the top of the first inning after a walk and a single. Yeah, a little blooper right over the second baseman's head, kind of in that triangle between the two outfielders coming in and the infielder going out, and then they couldn't make the play. Kicked it around out there in center field, allows the extra 60 feet. And now runner at third with just one out for the biggest bat in this Riverside lineup. That big bat, of course, belonging to Katie Ridge, as we highlighted in the top of the broadcast. 457, six home runs, 32 RBI. And the top four in this Lady Rebels lineup, very difficult to navigate for Allison Edwards with a chance to take a lead here in the top of the first inning. And as a team, Bobby, that may be considered the underdog going into the matchup, how important is it to strike first? Well, I think it's always big, especially for everybody thinks Mansfield's the better team, or at least that's what the experts try to tell me. <laughs> uh, you can't tell Riverside that, but of course, anytime you can strike early, uh, you put a little doubt in that other team's mind. You never know how teams are going to handle adversity because we have time called once again. It's it's always so important. And of course, it doesn't guarantee you to win a contest, but if you can ever put some pressure on an opposing team, that's going to be huge. Head coach Donnie Eveld heading out to the pitcher circles. Looks like Eveld is complaining perhaps about the conditions on the field as it is continuing to rain here in Conway. You can see the rain around both the umpires and Coach Eveld. But he is headed back to the dugout, and it looks like play will continue here in the 2A state title game. Taken on the outside corner, a called strike. That was the first pitch to Katie Ridge after the conversation between Mansfield head coach Donnie Eveld and the umpiring crew as that misses outside one and one. It's being really methodical with the delivery from Edwards to, to her battery mates. Just kind of really trying to slow this contest down, maybe waiting for the rain to clear out just a little bit. You can see her trying to dry off the softball in her glove, try to keep that hidden from the, the elements. Swung on and missed as Ridge goes over the rise ball. And to your point, Brooklyn Adams behind the plate for Mansfield. She and Edwards have worked together for a long time, know each other very well. So Adams working in, trying to calm down her pitcher here in the state championship game. 2-2 two -two count to the number four hitter. Change up, that's going to be pulled foul. You can see the, the, the game plan against Ridge is try to elevate up out of the zone, but that time didn't get it up high enough, and Ridge able to get on top of that one and just pulled it foul. A dangerous pitch, though, to try and go high in the zone if you don't elevate it enough. If you're going up, you've got to go up, because obviously she's got some height, got some long arms. She's going to be able to go up and get it. We saw that come into play last night a couple of times. We had a handful of home runs between our two state championship games on Thursday. Taken on the outside corner, strike three. That's a big punch out there. Katie Ridge didn't necessarily like the call. Looked like it might have been a touch outside, but a huge strikeout for Allison Edwards to get the second out of this inning. Edwards coming back with a curveball on the outside corner to freeze Ridge. That is part of the first time through the lineup for both hitters and pitchers trying to establish what the strike zone is going to be that day. But Sarah Lawson said it caught the black. Now two away here in the first. That one wide. A lot of late movement on that curveball. It's all about where it crosses the plate, not necessarily where it hits the catcher's glove. And that's the, the trait of a, a really good pitcher is that late movement. Only a fraction of the ball has to catch a fraction of the plate. 1-0. That comes back inside. That's hammered out to left field, but it's going to go foul. That one dove really hard into the hands. A nice job by Brooklyn Berry just to get her hands inside to get a barrel on it. But that pulls foul. It's really hard to keep one that far inside on your hands inside that third base bag. You mentioned the late breaking movement. How difficult is it for a hitter to adjust to that type of movement? It's tough, especially if, if you're not used to seeing a pitcher who has that, and that's really hard to replicate. It's not something that every pitcher in, in high school softball is going to have at their disposal. It's really tough, and so it's one of those that you also have to protect, protect the plate because you know that late movement's coming. 1-1, swung on and missed. 
as Edwards starts to find her groove after issuing a one-out walk, gave up a single. Came back to freeze Katie Ridge on the outside corner, now ahead in the count one and two to Brooklyn Berry. Riverside trying to strike first here in this 2A state title game. One, two. Popped right back into the fence. So the big moment you feel like in this, in this contest, I know it's the top of the first. Manfield hasn't even batted yet. But if you can step onto the field of the state championship and the first time you come to the plate, you push one across, you're going to feel pretty good about your chances. In the state championship game, everything has a little bit more importance every at bat, every pitch. That's why it's so important for hitters and pitchers to stay locked in each and every one. We'll do the one, two again. Swung on and missed. Back to back strikeouts for Allison Edwards to work herself out of the jam. She keeps Riverside off the board as Mansfield will come to bat in the bottom of the first. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. This month on Arkansas PBS. Bought it for, because I loved it. Find out if Leslie loves it too next time on Antiques Roadshow from Little Rock, Arkansas. At a time when America has become increasingly divided, it's important to consider the things that connect us. His vision is broader than the American Revolution. The things that he spoke of, that he wrote about, had a certain amount of power. Only on Arkansas PBS. Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! Arcare is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Arcare network of medical clinics and pharmacies helps to keep you in the game playing your best. Arcare, so you can live your story. Mansfield worked around a walk and a hit to get out of the top of the first scoreless as the Tigers come to bat here in the bottom of the first inning. It will be Kinsley Ward, Brooklyn Adams, and Allison Edwards to lead things off. They will be facing Claire Womack inside the circle. First pitch misses on the outside corner. Yeah, Womack's been the workhorse for Riverside this year. 18 and 3, 120 innings of work, 241 strikeouts. Gets a swing and a miss there from Ward. So I mentioned how Edwards is averaging almost two strikeouts per inning. Womack is averaging more than two strikeouts per inning. <laughs> this one could turn out to be a pitcher's duel. A swung on and missed quickly. Womack works ahead in the count one and two. Worried though, 449, 30 RBIs, four home runs. It's a lot of pop for the top of the lineup for this Mansfield Lady Tiger team. That has been the trend in softball over the last several years as the rise ball goes out of the zone. Check the swing down to first base umpire Ray Burnwell. He says no. Ward was able to hold. It's close. I think we got that one right, though. The 2-2. Two -two. Taken for strike three. That one's too close. Kind of tailed back over the outer third. Really nice pitch there from Womack. And pretty easy to see why she has such a high strikeout total. 242 now on the season. Paints the outside corner for the first strikeout of the game for Claire Womack. The first pitch strike to Brooklyn Adams batting in the two spot. As we go ahead and take a look at the Riverside defense. You've got Thomas Cox, Eakins, Ridge, third to first, Womack, Berry in the battery. And across the outfield, it's Paris McGee, Annalie Qualls, and Carly Joe Womack in right field. The one, two, three hitters. In this Mansfield lineup, go 449, 500, and 632, talking about batting average. So there's a lot of production, a lot of productivity there at the top of the lineup. We'll see how Womack handles it the first time through. A lot of 
productivity in the lineup. The defense going to have to be ready because this is not a Mansfield team that strikes out very often. Tigers typically put the ball in play. However, going up against a high volume strikeout pitcher may change that today. Yeah, Womack certainly trying to elevate and trying to get Adams to chase one out of the zone. The last two have been, I would say, letters and above. Even the count at two and two. Swung on and missed for strike three. When you have a pitcher who's that many strikeouts, you know she's going to throw strikes, and that gives her the luxury of expanding the zone. That one up out of the zone, but Adams, and already facing with two strikes, tries to chase that one out of the zone, and she sat down swinging. Womack looking very comfortable here in the bottom of the first. First pitch strike, or ball rather, to Allison Edwards. 15 home runs, 12 doubles for Edwards. Just 20 home runs as a team for Mansfield. And she's got 15 of them. When you hit 632, it's not surprising that you're hitting 15 home runs. Edwards chases a rise. That rise ball so far looking really nice out of the hands of Womack. Gets to the backstop as Edwards works herself to a 3-1 count here in the bottom of the first inning, two away. A pair of strikeouts by Womack. Can't dissect the game plan if they're just two and a half batters, but you can <laughs> tell that Womack is really wanting to go up and out of the zone against this Mansfield team. Take advantage of that rise ball. Strike called on the outside corner. Edwards didn't like it. She thought she drew ball four, but now the count runs full. Swung on and missed as Womack retires the side in order in the bottom of the first. We're through one here in the 2A state title game. No score yet. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Arkansas, what's in your attic? Find out what your heirlooms, antiques, and collectibles are worth. Join us for the filming of a brand new show, Arkansas Treasures. This special event happens at the Arkansas PBS Studios in Conway on August 5th and 6th. Tickets will go quickly, so guarantee your spot by calling or visiting our website. If your item and story are selected for filming, you may end up on our show. Your treasure may be worth more than you know. Two, three, turn it up. Whoa. It's going up Let's go. Moorheart Field Services providing precise original ground drone topography. Serving the Midwest and South U.S. 24-hour delivery survey grade accuracy. Visit moorheartfieldservices.com for details. Through one complete here in the 2A state title game between Riverside and Mansfield. No score yet. And this one has been a pitcher's duel so far. Three strikeouts for both Claire Womack and Allison Edwards as we get set to start the second. And it will be Claire Womack leading things off for the Lady Rebels. Called a strike at the top of the zone. I think the key for this contest, Dorian, is going to be who can handle the strike zone and I, you know, I mean that from an offensive standpoint it's like make, make them throw you strikes because we've kind of seen both of these pitchers really trying to, to expand that strike zone and make the other team chase and both teams have been happy to oblige up to this point quickly ahead in the count 0 and 2 to Claire Womack that outside corner being found by both pitchers early on as a called strike the 0-2 Swung on and missed. Three straight strikeouts out of the hand of Allison Edwards. That time again, made him chase the ladder upstairs. 
Falling behind in the count are these hitters, and that's really putting them at a, at a detriment because we've got two pitchers who know how to use that elevated fastball to get them to chase. And a lot of swings and misses so far in this two-way title game. Riley Eakin stepping into the box. Shows bunt, pulls back, takes a ball high. 343 hitter, 13 RBI on the year, 10 doubles. So some speed inside the box, trying to get Riverside started here in the top of the second. The rain has settled down here in Conway just a bit after a 20 minute rain delay. Catches the outside corner, evens the count at one and one. Edwards kind of living out there on the outside to get ahead in the count. This time evens it up and what we've seen when she does have an advantage, that's when she likes to, to elevate and go above the letters. 1-1. One, one. Elevates and a swung on and missed on the outside corner. And Edwards' battery made Adams very enthusiastic <laughs> already behind the plate. Can't tell me she's not locked in with every pitch. <laughs> now both teams locked and loaded, ready to go. The 1-2. Swung on and missed on the screwball. Strike three. Make that four straight retired via the strikeout as we take a look at the Mansfield defense playing behind Allison Edwards in today's state title game. You've got Smith, Ward, Triska, third, short, second. Harris over at first base. And left to right in the outfield, it is Fuller, Allison, and Kaylee Ward, Ward out in right field. Allison Edwards inside the circle and Brooklyn Adams behind the plate. Taken on the outside corner for a strike as Carly Jo Womack steps into the box. Yeah, playing in championship games is really no str stranger to this Mansfield squad. Not only were they in the championship game a couple years ago in softball, but their volleyball team has been a powerful or powerhouse, if you will, at the small school level. And they were even in the championship game this past fall. Ahead in the count, 0-2. Oh Bobby, you mentioned that state championship softball game back in 2021. Multiple players on this Mansfield team remember what it felt like to be walked off by Tuckerman. They are on a mission today. The 0-2, swung on and missed. Strike three, retired in order. Still scoreless. We go to the bottom of the second. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. We never gonna stop. The Children's Clinic of Conway and Greenbrier is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Children's Clinic of Conway and Greenbrier serving Conway and surrounding areas with locations at 2505 College Avenue, Conway, and 10 Lois Lane in Greenbrier. The Mansfield Tigers coming to bat in the bottom of the second. Four, five, six due up for Mansfield. Skylin Harris, Cole Smith, and Natalie Allison. Serenity Chick waiting should anybody reach. First pitch strike called on the outside corner. Claire Womack retired the side in order in the bottom of the first. No one. Swung on and missed quickly ahead in the count, 0-2. Bobby, it feels like this is going to be a theme this afternoon. Yeah, we've seen nine batters come up to the plate so far in this contest between the two teams, nine strikeouts. Taken low and away. 
Six strikeouts for Womack. Or rather, sorry, six strikeouts for Edwards, three for Womack, looking for number four. They will say Harris did not go. They check it down to first base. Burwell says no. Harris was able to hold. That's close. Might have gone either way. Harris puts it into play down over towards left field. It's going to find some purple. That ball is down off of the turf. Harris in with a leadoff single. That one just fell perfectly right inside the left fielder and the third base line. Not fair by much. But first base runner in the contest for the Lady Tigers. It can be a little bit deceiving out in out the outfield if you haven't seen Ferris Field before. The purple turf is in play. It just changes colors about five feet in front of the foul line. And good chase given by Paris McGee. Couldn't quite come up with it. Harris standing on first. As Cole Smith steps into the box, that was low. As you've already mentioned once, base runners are going to be at a premium, so you've got to be, be able to take advantage of that, especially when you get off the leadoff batter on. Free swing there, evens the count at one and one. Smith, a 327 hitter, five doubles, 18 RBI. Top five hitters in Mansfield's order, all batting 300 or better. Misses again low. Two in one the count. The first time that Womack has been behind to a hitter here in this Mansfield lineup. Squares bunt, pulls back, throw back to first. They call obstruction. And so Harris will be safe trying to get back to first. I like the idea. Maybe you the snap, the snap throw, maybe catch him napping off first. Throw him up there in time. Bunt popped up. Gets out of play. Now the count will be three and two. Be interesting to see if Mansfield wants to start the runner here with 33 punch outs in the first four batters. You may not want to risk a strike him out, throw him out situation, <laughs> but I like the idea of maybe being aggressive early in this contest. I agree with you. I like the idea of being aggressive. And called strike three on the inside corner. Harris stays put over it first, and there's now one away in the inning. That's a really nice pitch there from Womack. That one right at the knees. Well, he split the heart of the plate. Anytime you're facing a full count, you know you're going to get something to swing at. And Smith just couldn't get the bat off the shoulder. Fourth strikeout and five batters for Womack. First pitch swinging. Natalie Allison fouls it away. Coming at you. Coming at you. I promise I got you, partner. <laughs> Appreciate that. I need all the <laughs> help I can get. I don't move as quick as I used to. The 0 1 fouled back right again. So the timing by Allison right on it on the last two pitches. Yeah, Mansfield's having a really tough time staying off that elevated rise ball, though. But I, I get there's something about something right in your eyes is hard <laughs> to say no to. I, I understand that. But we're really expanding the strike zone and helping Womack out. Speaks to the effectiveness of Womack's rise ball. Tries it again, stays upstairs. Good adjustment there from Allison to let it go. One, two, runner on first, one away. And taken again, high and outside, evens the count at two and two. I like the idea, they're back to back, try to get them to go out of the zone. Allison, a 286 hitter, 16 RBIs on the season for the Lady Tigers. Swung on and missed another strikeout as Claire Womack continues to rack up the Ks. It's just hard to, to lay off of. That's three straight that were out well out of the zone, but you just expect something to be, be close, and that time just up and away, and Allison couldn't make contact. Womack mowing down Mansfield at the plate. First pitch swung on and missed. Serenity Chick stepping in. 
Chick, 194 on the year, 10 RBI, two doubles. Mansfield was able to get a leadoff single off the bat of Skyland Harris. Taken outside, count even at one and one. And Bobby, I don't know about you, but the way this game is already trending through two innings, this feels like it's going to come down to one run, maybe two at the most. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's going to have, once you get a, a runner on, you may have to consider, you know, sacrificing them over, maybe attempted a so stolen base and try to steal one. Because it really doesn't seem like these pitchers are going to allow multiple hits that allow you to go to station to station too many times in this contest. They're locked in. The 2-1. High and out, swung on, and now a two and two count as Claire Womack continues to rack up the strike total, trying to work around a leadoff single here in the bottom of the second. Taken for strike three. Add three more to the strikeout total as Mansfield gets a runner on, can't get her in. We are scoreless going to the top of the third. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring, for everything that matters most to you and your family. There's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. This month on Arkansas PBS. I know your grandfather will never consent to me. Is it not perfectly dreadful, Harriet, to learn that our niece's honor is now certainly lost? Fearfully romantic, though. Elizabeth! She's missing, and I'm worried sick. Mom, you don't believe me. You've got to stop all this nonsense. The world-famous thief. Father Brown's friend and nemesis is in trouble. Flambeau is now a killer. For once, I'm innocent. Only on Arkansas PBS. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. For those in the community looking for meal options after the game, Raising Cane's is known for their hand-battered chicken fingers and special sauce. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. Well, if you love strikeouts, this is the game for you. Both Allison Edwards and Claire Womack have been racking them up. And another strike on the outside corner. 9-1-2 due up here for Riverside in the top of the third. It is Paris McGee, Anna Lee Qualls, and Kaylee Cox. Just three runners total for the two teams through two complete innings. And swung on and missed as Edwards continues to pound the outside corner. We've seen that a lot. I think we're going to see a lot more of it. 12 outs recorded so far in this contest. 12 via the punch outs. The old, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. The 0-2, swung on and missed. Make that six straight strikeouts for Allison Edwards going back to the bottom of the first inning. Apparently picking up a base hit off of Edwards has made her mad. <laughs> you think her coach would trade one hit for six consecutive strikeouts? <laughs> Any time, any place, no doubt. Rolls things back up to the top of the lineup. Annalie Qualls, the first strikeout victim of the game. First pitch swinging, fouls it back. Bobby, if you're Riverside, it's now the second time through the lineup. You've seen Allison Edwards once. What adjustments do the Lady Rebels need to make? I, I think you have to maintain your strike zone. You, you have to, one, make sure that she's throwing you hittable pitches. But you have to be aggressive because she has lived ahead in the count, and that's a dangerous place to be as a hitter. The 0-1, fouled away. And it really looks like Edwards has found her comfort zone on that outer third. And so my, it, it's really hard to say, hey, you need to dive out and make protect that outside corner because that's when you get busted in on the hands. But it really seems like Allison Edwards is, is wanting to live and die by that outside black. Head in the count 0-2. Oh Nice patience there from Qualls, takes that pitch high and out. Five, 
Edwards walked Kaylee Cox in the first, gave up a single to Mackenzie Thomas, but since then it's been straight strikeouts. Uses the changeup for the first time and gets Qual swinging for the second time today. And correct me if I'm wrong, that may be the first time that she's pulled the string on the changeup. So after the first time through the lineup of pre pre predominantly the hard stuff, that time <laughs> she pulls the string and way out in front was Qualls for another strikeout. So then how hard is it to adjust now to the off speed <laughs> after you've been trying to adjust to the outside corner? It's called not fair. That's what that's <laughs> called. It's, it, I, and what I really like what Edwards did there, she waited until she got all the way through the lineup to show that off, even though the scouting report is obviously out there and they know what her repertoire is. But until you see it with your own eyes, it's really hard to, to gauge that. And now you've got to worry about multiple pitches for strikes. And that makes life even more difficult for a Riverside hitter. Caught on the outside corner to Kaylee Cox, who walked on four straight pitches. And even though it's only been two innings ago, it feels like a lifetime ago since Edwards was struggling to find the strike zone has settled in nicely and paints the outside corner once again, one and two. Yeah, she's just living out there and she's just challenging these Riverside hitters. You, you can take it all day, it's gonna be a called strike or you can try to, to flail at one and they haven't had much success at swinging. And now this is where she's really had some success elevating and maybe even she goes back to that changeup. Goes back to the outside corner, misses to even the count at two and two. Bobby, if I told you that Allison Edwards did not throw a first pitch strike in the first inning, what would you say? Uh, I, I don't know if I believe you. Either, right? <laughs> it's in the staff book, I promise you. It's, it's correct. Two and two. That one misses as Cox runs the count full. So a patient at bat here in the top of the third inning by Kaylee Cox. One of only two base runners for Riverside to reach through the first two and two thirds in a scoreless game. Fouled back. Since that time, Bobby, Allison Edwards has gone first pitch strike to four batters out of the last five. She's found a group. She's really <laughs> settled down. I, I really do think giving up that base hit really helped her settle down and know that she's got to hit her spots. So but this is a really good at bat by Cox here. Three, two. Taken on the outside corner, a called strike three. So another one, two, three inning by Allison Edwards. We head to the bottom of the third. Still no score here in the 2A state title game. You are watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. come from miles around to come to 9th Street just to see what it was like. I'm saying this was the mecca of entertainment in the South. I want to play the walk off of the oh, yeah. We thought we was on top of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Download the PBS video app or watch online. Can you see her greatness when you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Congratulations to our Arkansas PBS student all-star, Silver Mullenix from Quitman High School, a catcher with a 3.9 GPA. She will continue her athletic and academic career playing softball at Lyon College. Congratulations, Silver. Always great to see student athletes moving on to the next level, getting that opportunity to play collegiately. Starting to see a lot more programs pop up, especially for the baseball and softball programs. I really like the, the rise of the junior college ranks here in our state. Mm -hmm. Collegiate softball in Arkansas continuing to grow off of the back of the success of the Razorbacks and the UCA Bears, who are getting set to start in the Tuscaloosa Regional just about an hour and a half from now. First pitch sent out. It will get out of play. That was a big swing off of the bat of Kaylee Ward. It will be Ward Triska then the top of the order in Kinsley Ward due up for Mansfield on the bottom of the third. Just 
a good old-fashioned pitcher slugfest here. <laughs> and the question may not be who can strike out more, is who's going to give up the least number of hits along with it. I would say this feels like whoever gets up the last hit is likely going to end up losing this game. But both of these pitchers have been excellent as of yet. Strikeout for strikeout. Another swing and a miss from Ward. Yep, every out recorded. I'll probably keep saying that every <laughs> half inning, every out recorded has been a strikeout. It's going to be a broken record. But watching these two young ladies pitch has been really impressive. Womack for Riverside and Edwards for Mansfield. Swung on and missed another strike out of the hands of Claire Womack. She has retired every batter via the strikeout and every batter from Mansfield except for Skyland Harris, who had the leadoff single. Trinity Triska batting in the nine spot. Takes a called strike on the outside corner. And Bobby, this is the spot in the lineup that's a little bit interesting for me going up against Womack because you have the lefty Triska, 388 batting average. Might try to play a little bit of small ball and put more pressure on Womack inside the circle. Yeah, you can kind of see the, the slap approach there, maybe try to put one in play for a defense that is essentially sitting back on their heels. They haven't had to do too much in the field. You never know what happens when you actually put them in motion. 1-1, one, one. line foul. I used to love that as a player, though, when I had a pitcher that I could rely on to just <laughs> rack up the strikeouts. It's an easy day out there. Just trot out there, wait for nine <laughs> strikes, and trot back. It's all the running I wanted to do. One, two count to Triska. Bottom of the third, no score yet between Mansfield and Riverside. One away, one, two. Rise ball stays up in the zone. Triska lays off to even the count at two and two. So when you see the slap approach, is there an obvious hole for every slap hitter? Is it inside, is it outside, or is it really vary from, from case to case? Swung on and missed for strike three up in the zone. And if there is an area, Bobby, where lefties tend to be a little bit more vulnerable, it is north and south because as they're moving through the box and the ball is rising up or down, it's more difficult for lefties to adjust to the movement. But it all comes back to matchup. It, it's an individual player inside the box as that's taken on the outside corner for strike one. Kinsley Ward struck out looking and hurt first at bat. Every player is different. Every player likes different pitches, but typically north-south is the most difficult for anyone to handle. As we are seeing as Womack continues to pound the upper part of the zone with the rise ball. Yeah, she's she's not even backing down now. She's just rearing up the pitch count near, about near 50 through uh, the, almost three innings of work, and she's like, all right, let's, <laughs> let's stop messing around here. I'm just going to throw strikes, and you can swing it out if you want to. I believe that is called efficient work. And quick work as both Riverside and Mansfield have continued to mow down batters at the plate. Two away here in the bottom of the third, one, two. Swung on and missed. Ward retired once again. And that is six in a row out of the hands of Claire Womack. No score yet, we go to the fourth. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. Not a bad investment. <laughs> that's like a 6,900 percent increase. Now that's money well spent. Excellent. Not a bad investment. Yeah. Your investment in this PBS station brings Antiques Roadshow into your home each week. That's a good investment. Call, text, or go online to give now. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Papa's got a brand new bag. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! Griffin Leggett Funeral Home is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. Serving the Conway area located at 1751 Dave Ward Drive in Conway. 
Griffin Leggett, proudly serving our communities in Central Arkansas since 1936. Through three complete, there is no score here in the 2A state championship game. This is a tight contest between Riverside and Mansfield. Called on the outside corner for strike one. Three, four, five due up for Mansfield, or uh, Riverside rather. Thomas Ridge Berry, Claire Womack waiting should anybody reach. Thomas has the only single for Riverside. That was a single in the first. Fouls it straight back into the Arkansas PBS sports sign. It's good branding. I don't know who put that there. <laughs> that's, good, that's a good idea. So I say, I appreciate the uh, the little notification. 46 pitches. We talked about the efficiency of both Allison Edwards and Claire Womack through three complete innings. Edwards has only had to throw 46 pitches, nine strikeouts. When you see the strikeout totals that high, though, the pitch count's going to tend to, to rise with it. Popped on the infield. Under it is Kinsley Ward for the first out of the inning. It feels weird to have a out not recorded via the strikeout, but this is what Allison Edwards has been able to do inside the circle. It has been strikeout after strikeout after strikeout. Nine strikeouts for Edwards through three and a third innings pitched. It's been just dominance in the circle on both sides of it. There's no way around it. That was the first ball put into play uh, as, as an out. First ball put into play since Thomas put the yeah. ball into play back in the first inning. Since then, it has been straight strikeouts as Katie Ridge, who looked at a called strike three back in the first, steps in. Ridge, one of the most dangerous hitters in this Lady Rebels lineup. 457. Caught on the outside corner. And Bobby, you and I were talking in between innings. That outside corner has consistently been called a strike. As a batter, when that is a called strike, what do you need to do to adjust to that pitch? I mean, you can see Ridge here. She's standing on the stripe of the batter's box. I mean, you really almost have to dive out across and go get it because you know if it's going to be um, almost to the stripe of that batter's box, the outside corner, certainly uh, you've, you've got to live out there as a batter and you're going to leave yourself a little vulnerable on the inside. Uh, but that call is being called assist, uh, consistent enough that you've got to start to adjust to it. Rise ball stays high. Doesn't really matter if you feel like it's a strike or right. not. If the umpire feels like a strike, then you have to respect that. Yeah, and, and you're more than three innings into this contest. Right. It's just the uh, umpire behind the plate's been consistent it's with it. It's not going to change now. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to adjust to, to the, the zone. The 2-2 two -two to Ridge. Swung on and missed. Another strikeout into the books for Allison Edwards. Back to the norm now, right? We got one <laughs> pop out. Let's get back to the strikeouts. Edwards continuing to rack up the strike zone and going back to the bread and butter. That outside corner, Bobby, has been her sweet spot today. Yeah, that likely would have been a called third strike. That one caught the, the corner of the plate there. Really nice job by Edwards to attack the best hitter in this Riverside lineup. Ten strikeouts now for Edwards. And a first pitch called strike looked at by Brooklyn Berry. Yeah, that's one of the best pitches you're going to get there. That one I probably caught too much of the plate if you ask Edwards. You got to be aggressive and, and take advantage of those mistakes when you get them because they haven't been very often. You a first pitch swinger? Always. Yep, me too. The 0 1. That one fouled away. Right on top of it, but just underneath. And sometimes that first pitch is the best one yeah. you're going to see. Well, the approach that I always took as, as a batter is you, you control what you can control. Don't, don't let the option of a called strike, you know, whether it's one, two, or three out there, get out there and swing. If it's close, might as well swing at it. 0-2. Oh, stays high and out. And again, it's hot most of the time, so it'll speed up this game, too. <laughs> well, we had rain in the area. For scheduled first pitch at 1 o'clock, it delayed the start of this game for just about 20 minutes. But the rain has cleared. The sun trying to peek out here at Ferris Field on the second day of the Arkansas High School State Championships. That one hit a mile foul. One of the few times we've seen Edwards come inside. And then it, both times that I can recall that she's done it, that's been the result. And on the hands and pulled well foul. And Riverside all over that Brooklyn Berry. That's one of the best seen swings we've seen. And one of the best scenes we've seen ah. is the blue sky. It does exist. The one, two, change up, popped foul, just gets out of play. 
A lot change in the speed there. We haven't seen it a ton from Edwards, but both have been, would have been strikes. Uh, nice job to fight that one off by Barry to keep her about it live. And it feels like Edwards now working through the second part of the Riverside order the second time, trying to differentiate her pitches a little bit more. The one, two, stays outside, two and two. As Edwards looks for yet another one, two, three inning. She's retired nine batters in a row after surrendering the single to Mackenzie Thomas back in the first. That one hit hard, hit deep. It is going to get foul. That ball looked a lot harder coming off it the barrel. It did. Just kind of died. You know, it's going to be a little muggy now after the rain. Mm -hmm. Ball may not carry as well. I thought that was a, again, another nice job by Barry to get her hands inside and try to fight that one off. Comes on the inside part of the plate. And Bobby, to your point, the humidity, it's going to keep balls down. It's much harder to get balls to fly when you have that heavy air. A two and two count. Swung on and missed. Another strikeout. That is number 11 for Allison Edwards. And she keeps Riverside off the scoreboard. Mansfield will look to strike first in the bottom of the fourth. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. What exactly did they get wrong? That Arkansas values our teachers. The House and Senate thought was very disingenuous. Arkansas Week is celebrating 40 years of public affairs programming. From news analysis to election and legislative coverage, see why Arkansas Week has become a staple for thousands of viewers every week. Tune in Fridays and Sundays and stay up to date the rest of the week by signing up for our newsletter at myarpbs.org slash sign up. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Hotel accommodations and sponsorship for the 2023 Arkansas High School State Baseball and Softball Championship broadcast provided by Hilton Garden Inn at 805 Amity Road in Conway and the home to suites at 820 Bill Dean Driveway in Conway. Bottom of the fourth, we are still scoreless between Riverside and Mansfield and the pitching of Claire Womack, one of the reasons why the Tigers have not been able to strike. Yeah, plenty of Tiger fans made the drive from Western Arkansas to watch their offense do work, but instead they've seen nothing but Claire Womack go to work in the circle. The first pitch swinging, it's a strike to Brooklyn Adams, who was retired via the strikeout back in the first. That has been same song, different verse. <laughs> for both Womack and Edwards inside the circle today. Just one ball put into play off of Womack. Fouled away. 0-2, Womack ahead in the count. And that's really been the key for Womack, has been working ahead in the count. Nine strikeouts, 51 total pitches through three complete innings. That one line right to third base, over to first in time. Thomas coming up with a hot shot, delivers a strike over to Ridge. A nice job there by Thomas to make the, the quick the quick reaction to make the throw across. And it's been nothing but this all day for Claire Womack. This one, two, I'm gonna lose count at some point. Struck out nine in the first three innings of work and Mansell has really struggled to get any kind of consistent looks at the strike zone and kind of expected that as Womack came into this contest with 241. And now it's an even 250 as far as strikeouts on the season. The ground out by Adams, just the second ball put into play by Mansfield today. As Allison Edwards now ahead in the count, 2-0. And, oh. and Womack has not fallen behind Mansfield batters. Make that 3-0 oh as Womack stays outside. 
Edwards, the biggest bat in this Mansfield lineup, though. 632 average, 15 home runs, 54 RBI. So, of course, you always want to be careful when you're going against your biggest competition. And that time, four that weren't even close. And the first free pass earned by these Lady Tigers. First walk of the day issued. Just two walks between both teams. You felt that was a little bit of respect to Allison Edwards in that situation? I think it was a little bit. Uh, maybe trying to be too fine. You know, as well as she's been pitching, I don't think she's worried about too many <laughs> things, no matter who steps into the plate. I wouldn't be either. Stepping to the plate is Skylin Harris, who singled back in the second inning to lead things off. That is the only hit recorded by the Tigers today. Now hitting with a runner on first, with one away. That one stays up and out, one and one. And when a team expands the strike zone as much as both of these two have, mm -hmm. up to this point, it's kind of hard as a pitcher to tell yourself that you need to throw strikes. You just kind of start to live outside of that outside edge, maybe above the strike zone. And then you get comfortable with it, and all of a sudden you get one batter, like Edwards just did, not go after it. It's tough to get back in there. Womack comes back with a swinging strike on the outside corner to get in the head account one and two to Skyland Harris. Called strike three on the outside corner. Another strikeout looking for Claire Womack. Harris didn't agree with it. Immediate reaction there from the Mansfield first baseman, but either way, strikeout number 10. Bobby, as you and I were talking about earlier, the batters may not agree with some portions of the strike zone. As that one flared out to right field. It's going to get down, but it has been a consistent strike zone behind the plate from Sarah Lawson. Yeah, it has been. I mean, so now you have to adjust as a team. You know the strike zone from the umpire, not going to change. So you have to go out there and adjust your game. So whatever you think the strike zone is, you better extend another three, four, five inches on that outside. Otherwise, you're going to get rung up. Second time through the lineup for Mansfield here in the bottom of the fourth. Check swing. Yes, she did as Cole Smith now behind in the count 0-2. And, and you ask most coaches around the state, you know, what do you want it with the strike zone? They don't care if it's perfect. It's they consistent. just want it to be consistent. Right. Same way both sides. It's the same with the collegiate game, too. Yeah. All, all you ask for as coaches and hitters is a consistent strike zone that gets called for both pitchers. Yeah, right now it's on these two teams, two very good teams, to make the adjustments. Right. The one, two. Taken for strike three on the outside corner. As Womack works around a one-out walk. No score yet. We go to the top of the fifth inning. This is a pitcher's duel to watch, and you are watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month on Arkansas PBS. The more time I spend in nature, I realize how fragile everything is. Give nature a chance and it'll come right back. That's what we're asking for, is to give the right world a chance. The mystery ship thought Titanic would, would not sink. How could any ship leave a ship, especially of Titanic size, in distress? Only on Arkansas PBS. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Welcome back to Ferris Field in the Arkansas High School State 2A championship game between the Mansfield Tigers and the Riverside Lady Rebels. No score yet in the fifth, and the pitching has been the reason why Allison Edwards standing in 62 pitches through four complete innings. 69 of which have been for a strike. Yeah, she's been really effective. Both these pitchers have almost been uh, near unhittable, to be quite honest. And they've gotten the benefit of a few calls outside the zone, but 11 strikeouts each. And now we've got to start counting the outs. Only nine <laughs> outs left in regulation here. So both of these squads need to find a way to get the offense working. I think in regulation is the key part of yeah. that sentence. As it will be Claire Womack to lead things off for Riverside. Womack 
Eakins and Carly Joe Womack do up. Paris McGee in the nine spot should anybody reach. No yep. surprise here. Womack retired via the strikeout. He swings and misses on the outside corner. That evens the count at one and one. And Bobby, at what point in this game does having played and won a state title before in program history start to come into play? You know, if these players had been a part of a championship team, I would say it, it would be that. But mm -hmm. since it's been over a decade now, since Mansfield's won their title, sure, they were in this championship game just a couple years ago. Maybe they handled the moment a little more. Maybe the experience of, of seeing the, the volleyball team in the championship, and some of these players were on that team. They played for a two-way volleyball title uh, this past fall, so maybe some of that comes into play. Called strike three on the outside corner to Womack as the first batter retired here in the top of the fifth inning. Is there such a thing as putting too much pressure on yourself? Mansfield coming into this game knowing what happened in 2021. Is there a chance that the Tigers try and maybe mentally work themselves out of it almost with no pressure on Riverside. Yeah, I think both these teams could kind of psych themselves out of it, especially if these pitchers continue to dominate like they have up to this point. You go up there trying to do too much, trying to go up there and swing for the fences because you know that it's going to be really tough to string base hits together. Uh, so so maybe that's going to be what makes or break, and that's going to make it even tougher to, to get something going because if you go up there looking to, to hit home runs, as you all know, Dorian, more times than not, you're going to swing and miss. Or you're going to pop it up, one yeah. of the two. Rarely does it result in the home yeah. run that you are looking for. The 0-1 to Eakins on a bunt attempt. Shows bunt again off the brim of the helmet. That's why you see that face mask in to protect the face as Eakins finds herself behind in the count 0-2. I mean, I like the idea. you got to find a way to get on base. Put some pressure on this Mansfield defense because there just hasn't been much traffic on the base path, really either side, and play a little small ball because right now the – the pitching game is strong, and it's uh, they're really struggling just to even put the ball in play either side. I agree with you. I like the decision to try and mix up the routine as Edwards misses up and out. Try and break the rhythm because that's one thing that both pitchers have really have working in their favor. They have both found a rhythm, and neither team so far has been able to disrupt them. Yeah. And there's a good look at the Mansfield defense there. <laughs> Hasn't had many chances out there, but they're used to it with a dominant pitcher like Edwards. The one, two, fouled right back into the screen. Eakins right all over that. By far the best swing of the bat there by Eakins. But again, much like it has been this entire contest, very few put into play. And there's not a lot you can do with that pitch. That was actually really well pitched and really mm -hmm. placed on, on the outside corner. The one, two, comes on the inside. It fouled off the hands and the end of the bat as they will keep Eakins in the box. And that does look like it came off the hands, but as a batter, the hands are considered part of the bat. As much as that's going to hurt, that technically should be a foul ball. Yeah, the reaction there from the hitter, uh, she didn't sell it. So sometimes you've, you've <laughs> right. got to sell it. You know, maybe earn yourself an Academy Award out there. If she goes up there and acts like a hitter actually on the forearm and not the hands, maybe pick yourself up a cheap base. That's wow. funny that you say that. I had a coach when I was playing travel ball when I was 12 that called it an Oscar-winning performance. <laughs> you had to sell it. As it stands, Eakins will stay in the box with a 1-2 count, one out in the fifth. The changeup swung on and missed for strike three. Edwards hasn't gone to the changeup very often, but when she has, it's been effective. It really has been. It's, that's definitely her two-strike pitch the second time through this lineup. That's the third time we've now seen her go to it. Two strikeouts and one foul tip. Not overthrowing it too often, not letting this Riverside team get too many looks at it. But when she's been able to throw it out there, it's been, it's been tough to hit. 12 of the last 13 batters faced by Allison Edwards, retired via the strikeout, including Carly Joe Womack. Swings at the first pitch, rise ball. Womack struck out looking to end things in the top of the second. This game mowing right along just over the hour mark. Of course, we started about 20 minutes late because of the weather delay. And you look at the skies and the weather and the, and the shots on your screen, you can't tell that weather was here just an hour ago. One of the, the beauties of living in central Arkansas, it can be raining yep. one minute and 90 degrees and humid the next. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you don't like the weather, give it five minutes and <laughs> it'll change.
It is now a beautiful day for softball here in the state of Arkansas. First softball state championship game of the day. We've got the 4A coming up a little bit later as the 1-1 offered and a called strike at the top of the zone. Northwest Arkansas going to invade Ferris Field here in just a little bit. Both Gravit <laughs> and P. Ridge making the trip down 49 and 40. It's been a great first day and a half of softball action. We saw two good games yesterday. This one really living up to the expectations here between Riverside and Mansfield. No score yet in the top of the fifth. The one, two stays outside. Good idea from Carly Joe Womack. And that's the adjustment, Bobby, for me that Riverside needs to make the most. Stop expanding the zone. It's tough on that outside corner because that's been a called strike, but being able to determine what's a strike yeah. and what isn't quickly. Yeah, both these pitchers have been, been taking advantage of that outside mm -hmm. strike, uh, but neither one of them have found themselves in much trouble. You know, really just one free pass on both sides, and again, another punch out. I'll make it strike out the side here in the fifth inning. We go to the bottom five, still no score. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service, because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind, Centennial Bank, member FDIC. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. A special thank you to the University of Central Arkansas for their help setting up and hosting the event and broadcast. Central Arkansas Athletics, home to 19 NCAA Division I sports and over 450 student athletes who succeed on both the fields and courts as well as in the classroom. Visit UCASports.com to learn more. Score is here in the bottom of the fifth inning in the 2A state championship game between Mansfield and Riverside. This one has been a tale of two dominant pitchers. Claire Womack, 11 strikeouts through the first four innings. Going to work against Natalie Allison, Serenity Chick, and Kaylee Ward here in the bottom of the fifth. You can't change your game plan, but at some point you might have to tweak things a little bit, maybe play a little more small ball than you're used to. You've got to find a way to start putting some runners on base and put some pressure on these defenses, which have been stagnant because their pitchers have been so dominant. And to be fair, the ball put into play by Brooklyn Adams to lead off the fourth. A hot shot was fielded over at third base by Thomas as that one swung through, one and two the count. And base runners have been few and far between. Skied, it's going to stay on the infield. Two players converging in the sun, but Cox is under it for out number one. It's a nice job to shield the sun there. You can see the high skies, the sun's out. No sunglasses to be found, but a nice play there by the shortstop. Record the first out of the inning. How difficult is it to adjust as a fielder where you start with the rain and the clouds, yeah. now you've got the sun, you have to deal with that when you didn't initially expect to? It's, it's difficult. I mean, you're talking right now, the sun directly above the field. You can't see the shadows is essentially non-existent out there. So you're looking right up into that star that you know makes our life possible <laughs> uh, but <laughs> makes life a little difficult for the fielders i was gonna say may make life possible but it can make your day miserable sometimes yeah. in the field as serenity chick and head coach donnie evel talking things over down at third base and chick looked like she was taking all the way so maybe some confusion there on the signs as we are reset here in the bottom of the fifth inning 0-1 count, shows Bunt pulled back but fouled away. And Bobby, to your point, there's the decision by Mansfield to try and break things up a little bit, go to the small ball. 
Sometimes you just don't know how a pitcher is going to react to when you see someone square around to bunt. Maybe they try to yank one out of the zone so they don't give you a good pitch to hit, and, and maybe you can take advantage of that and get you a free base. Call strike three on the outside corner. Chick knew it. And there are two away here in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, that one's just right down the middle. I and mean, that's one of the best pitches you're going to get to hit. You can see the late movement. That one just dives right back over the heart of the plate. That's as good a pitch as you're going to get with two strikes. That's twice now Chick's gone down looking. Kaylee Ward retired via the strikeout to lead things off in the third inning. As both teams getting short on out, strike one. And... Bobby, the question that we should start to be thinking about is how long can both of these pitchers go yeah. if this game continues the way that it has? Yeah, if the game plan is to wait for the other pitcher to tire out, we may be here a while. Because obviously both these pitchers have thrown the, the, the workload of, of innings this year. Really only one pitcher of note for both squads, and those two have thrown 30 innings or less. And so the, I think it's going to be Edwards and Womack until their arm falls off. Someone will have to break through at some point. This feels like whoever gets the last hit will be the winner. As Ward behind in the count, one, two, two away in the fifth. Swung on and missed. Another strikeout. Continue to rack them up for Claire Womack. We got two innings left in the 2A state championship game. Who will strike first? It's Riverside and Mansfield, no score yet. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Support your PBS station and you can get Passport, giving you full seasons, early releases, special collections, and more. Download the PBS video app or watch online. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home to your first child and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring, for everything that matters most to you and your family. There's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau insurance. Real service. Real people. Special thank you to Conway Corp for their help setting up the event and broadcast. Conway Corp was formed in 1929 to support education in Conway, and more than 90 years later, serving the community and its educational needs remain a core value. Learn more about the nationally recognized utilities provided for the community at ConwayCorp.com. Top of the sixth inning, no score yet in the two-way state title game. Riverside and Mansfield shows bunt. On the first pitch, fouled away. Good idea by Paris McGee. The nine-hole hitter trying to lead things off here in the sixth inning as the Lady Rebels trying to finally break through against Allison Edwards. Yeah, it's got to find a way to, to cause a little havoc to that defense, get someone on base, try to move them over. I think you you really could see on both sides, you know, that old the old school thought process of softball. Get somebody on, move them over, move them over, and, and pray for a two-out hit. Bobby, you and I talked about that yesterday. You know I'm a proponent of small ball. Bunt shown again. This one is in play. It's over to the right side. Edwards makes the play. Flips it over to first, and McGee is retired for the first out of the inning. That's a really good job defensively. Nice rotation. That's the second baseman, Triska, getting over to get in cover first base. That's, that's exactly what you do. Nice job to field her own position. So the right idea by the Riverside, but Mansfield defense was up to the challenge. Turns things over for the top of the lineup, and Anna Lee Qualls who has struck out swinging in both of her at-bats in the first and the third. Just the third ball put into play by the Lady Rebels. And a first pitch strike on the outside corner once again. Again, that's, you know, first pitch. I know every, every batter has their comfort level, and you know, sometimes you try to get ahead in the count. But that, that's the best pitch she's likely going to see in this at-bat. Now Qualls is already behind. The 0-1. Comes back on the inside corner, sliced foul, 0-2. Qualls the ninth batter that has gotten a first pitch strike from Allison Edwards. 
Always going to be successful if you're working from ahead as a pitcher. To that point, eight batters. She has gotten ahead in the count 0 and 2. That's how you get 14 strikeouts to five <laughs> innings work. The 0 2 on the way. Line out into right field. That one's going to get down. It falls for a one out single as Qualls adjusts to the pitch on the outside corner and takes it to right field for a line drive single. That's a really good, nice job. Good, good piece of hitting there by Qualls. You know that she's been living outside. The strike zone's been expanding to that side. So dive out there and flip it out to right field. And now you got yourself a one out base hit. Qualls came into the game a 415 hitter on the year. 17 extra base hits, three home runs, delivers a one out single. Just the third base runner of the game for the Lady Rebels, the first since the first inning. Allison Edwards had been dominant, has been dominant still in the top of the sixth inning as Kaylee Cox, who has been a tough at bat in both of her times in the plate, walked on four pitches in the first, did strike out looking. That one's going to get to the backstop and now Qualls on her way to second. On the wild pitch. That's why we talk about runners being so important because it doesn't matter how you move them over. You put a little pressure on a team. You put some pressure on an opposing pitcher. We haven't seen her have command issues all game long. All of a sudden, that one goes to the backstop. Now a runner in scoring position. Only the second runner in scoring position of the entire game. Both of those have been the Riverside Lady Rebels. Cox was on third back in the first inning before back-to-back -back strikeouts. Shows bunt put in play. Only play is to first. And a good job by Edwards to field her position. But once again, Riverside doing their job. And now with two outs, a runner just 60 feet away from giving Riverside the lead. Yeah, it's a, it's a great bunch, but also a great job of fielding her position for Edwards. Comes out of the circle and fires an absolute rope to first base to get her in plenty of time. Now two outs, but a runner on third. And now that's what we saw a lot of it yesterday. With that wild pitch becomes so important. The defense for Brooklyn Adams behind the plate is going to be huge. Mackenzie Thomas has the other hit for Riverside. Swings through the first pitch. Thomas singled in her first at bat, popped up to short in the second. The only player in the Riverside lineup that has not been retired via the strikeout in this game. Take an extra pause as Adams looking into the dugout to get the sign. This feels like a big moment here. Top six, two outs, one on. Good job by Adams to keep that ball in front. Bobby, if you're Thomas here, what's your mentality? I think you've, you've got to make her throw you a strike. I mean, more importantly, she's going to try to make you chase, you know, play her game, make you throw something, a good pitch to hit, but also be aggressive. The 1-1. One, one. Aggressive cut there, fouled back okay. into the screen. But Edwards ahead in the count, 1-2. and two. So now you got to protect. I mean... I don't know if you look change up here. I don't know the confidence level. Obviously, she won 25 games for a reason this year. Do you throw the two the two strike change up with a runner on third, or you just stick with that outside fastball that you've had so much success with? We'll find out the one two in the dirt. Adams is there to cover it up. Evens the count at two and two. Sometimes that confidence with with a change up of two strikes also determines the, the confidence you have in your catcher. Mm -hmm. And that's how Adams did a great job of smothering that one and making sure it didn't get by her. Adams and Edwards have been battery mates for a long time. The 2-2 two -two comes inside. That is a ball. Did not miss by much. One of the few times that Edwards has changed things up, gone to the inside corner, and now the count runs full at 3-2. and two. Yeah, I think that one caught everybody off guard because she, she does not go inside very often. That one died over the, the inside corner, maybe a touch inside. Maybe a break for Riverside. That wasn't called strike three. 3-2. Three Fouled away. She took her front hand off of the bat. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> I do that when I play golf, and it usually doesn't work out well, but that time <laughs> she's able to fight it off and stay alive. That is the definition of hanging with the pitch, that front hand coming off the handle. And we will do the 3-2 again in what is arguably the biggest moment of this two-way state championship game up to this point. The pitch. That one's lined out into the outfield. It's going to get down. Riverside scores on the two-out single off of the bat of Mackenzie Thomas. Thomas has been the only batter for this Riverside team, Dorian, as you already mentioned, who's had any kind of success. Now both 
The singles to left field, but that one is huge here in the sixth as it breaks the scoreless tie and the Lady Rebels take the lead. Thomas coming through off the end of the bat and you can see the excitement from Anna Lee Qualls. Immediately knew that ball was down, headed for home. And Bobby, we talked about this game felt like it was going to come down to the very end. That one run feeling like three or four as that is off the fist. That ends the inning for Riverside in the top of the sixth inning. But the Lady Rebels strike first. Mansfield will try to answer. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. Many of the stories told about kings and queens have been spun. Who knows where facts and fibs may take us next. This would have been your grandfather's experience and it's really quite dramatic. Hell in frozen water. The war really mattered to Elizabeth. She is growing in confidence. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! A special thank you to the Conway Chamber of Commerce for helping us organize and set up the event and broadcast. The Conway Chamber of Commerce serving the Conway area business community since 1891. For more information, visit conwaychamber.org. Mansfield coming to bat in the bottom of the sixth inning, needing a run to tie this game after Riverside finally broke through in the top half. It will be 9-1-2 for the Tigers here in the bottom of the inning. Trinity, Triska, Kinsley, Ward, and Brooklyn Adams do up. Allison Edwards waiting in the wings should anybody reach. And Bobby, we saw in the top half of the sixth inning as dominant as both these pitchers have been. Riverside found a way to get on what does Mansfield need to do here against Claire Womack. I think that's going to be the recipe uh, to, du to duplicate that. He's got to manufacture runs, find a way to get a runner on base, move them over, whether it's on a wild pitch, a sacrifice, whatever the case may be, because we've already seen it's, it's almost impossible to stream together hits against these two pitchers. Bunt foul has Triska behind in the count 0-2, 1-2 and, two, one and two rather. And by the way, that top half of the sixth inning is the first half inning that has not included a strikeout in this game. Not included multiple strikeouts. That's true. Yeah. Stays upstairs two and two. These two pitchers have been so good. It's, it's almost unfair that one of them is going to have to lose. I would agree. Unfortunately, that is what happens in state championships games. Someone has to win. Somebody has to lose the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. The wise ball gets Triska to chase. I don't bring two champion trophies. <laughs> they stopped doing that in third grade. I believe. <laughs> Rise ball out of the zone. Four straight strikeouts for Claire Womack. As she and Riverside inching closer to the program's first state title. Kinsley Ward stepping in. Two strikeouts. And a first pitch strike. Top of the order here for Mansfield. So they've got the right part of the lineup up. They want to tie this contest. Feels like the time is now for the Tigers. That one lined out to right center field. It's going to get down. Ward is thinking too. And she is into second. That ball skips away, but Ward standing on second base. The first hit, or the second hit of the day, first extra base hit of the day for the Tigers. Maybe it's no surprise that the third time through the lineup for both of these squads is when that production has started to come. So you're starting to see what these pitchers have. You start to time it just a little bit and a great job of staying down, driving through that softball, go the other way and finds the gap. And all of a sudden Mansfield now has a runner in scoring position. Similar to the single by Walls, that pitch was on the outside part of the plate. Ward made the adjustment. 
Outside corner looked at for strike number one. Brooklyn Adams standing in. A strikeout and a ground out to third to lead things off in the fourth. She's committed to play at Carl Albert State College across the border there in Oklahoma. Chases a rise ball high behind in the count 0-2. Junior college in, in Poto. You know what Poto's famous for? I do not. It's the world's largest hill resides in Poto, Oklahoma. Wouldn't that make it a mountain? No, it's a foot too short. It's a foot. Okay. The 0-2. Fouled back to the screen. I believe the the, uh, the minimum requirement to be called a mountain is 2,000 feet, and is it like I think it's 1,997 or 98 feet. What I don't understand is like if you live out there, why not go out there and shovel like three feet of dirt on it? It could be the world's smallest mountain. <laughs> Arkansas PBS Sports come for softball, stay for random knowledge. The 0-2 swung on and missed as Adams is retired now two away in the inning with a runner on second and here comes allison edwards trying to help her own cause edwards struck out to end the first walked in the fourth i want to know did you look up that piece of information just specifically to use have you been holding on to it the whole time no actually okay. that's what I, I grew up in oklahoma it's one of our rivals so. I was going to say, I knew you grew up in Oklahoma, but I, I did yeah. not know the specifics. So, so we, just, we just made fun of them that they couldn't even qualify as a mountain. <laughs> First pitch high and outside. I'll have to look up some Pittsburgh-based <laughs> fact information for tomorrow. Big moment in the game here for Mansfield. First runner in scoring position for the Tigers. As Edwards takes a called strike on the outside corner. About as good of a pitch as you were going to see as a hitter out of the hand of Claire Womack this afternoon. The 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Called strike number two. And you see the frustration there from Edwards as she turned around. But as a pitcher, you have to know that's been a strike. Right, and, and, and she's been getting the benefit of that call on the other end of it. So she knows that's going to be called a strike. She needs to dive out there and flip that the other way. Swung on and missed for strike number three. Mansfield gets a double from Kinsley Ward but cannot push her across. We head to the seventh inning as Riverside leads 1-0. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. During the past year, we've been traversing the natural state with our cinematic drone from lakes and rivers, waterfalls, scenic byways, mountains, swamps, overlooks, and towering rock formations. This unique documentation of all four seasons from all four corners of the state with an aerial cinematic perspective will give you, the viewer, an Arkansas adventure like never before, exploring Arkansas from above. Download the PBS video app or watch online. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. At Wendy's, we're focused on what matters. That's why we've made our hamburgers square. When you want to experience the delicious taste of Wendy's hamburgers, squares the beef. Final inning here in the 2A state championship game between Riverside and Mansfield. The Lady Rebels broke through in the top of the sixth inning against Alice and Edwards, but Bobby, this one has still been a pitcher's duel from start to finish. Yeah, Womack and Edwards have just been dominant in the circle. The strikeout numbers are through the roof, and all it was is just one player breaking through with that big timely hit. Riverside got it in the sixth inning, and now they're going to look to try to add a little insurance before the man so gets that last at bat in the home half of the seventh. It will be Barry Womack and Eakins due up for Riverside. 
Ball low and away. Barry has struck out in both of her previous at bats to end the first and to end the third. Riverside three outs away from their first state title. Another ball in the turf. 2-0 and now to Barry. And if you're Mansfield here, you've just got to attack the zone and keep that deficit at one. You got to keep it as minimal. We saw it yesterday mm -hmm. uh, in that 6A championship game. Bryant was able to keep Cabot from tacking on a couple extra runs late, made a great diving catch, able to put up five spot in that seventh <laughs> inning. Uh, so obviously, don't, don't think Mansfield's going to need five to win this one, but obviously they need to keep the gap at one. Called strike on the inside corner. That's a big pitch from Edwards to get a strike on the leadoff batter. And Bobby, to your point, it, you're right. It does not feel like this is going to need a five spot. This feels like it's going to be 2-1, maybe 3-2 yep. at the absolute most, the way this game is gone. Tapped foul down the third baseline. Good try over there by Lady Rebels head coach TJ Eakins. He hasn't been very busy down there either. No. And don't, you don't have to send in signals very often when there's no one on base. Go look at head coach TJ Eakins over there for Riverside. 24 and 4 coming into today's state championship game. The 2 2 swung on and missed. Another strikeout for Allison Edwards. That is the 15th of the game. 15 punch outs. She's been on her game since this one started about 120. Creeping up on 100 pitches now. Three hits, one run. Uh, of course, came back in the sixth. Womack stepping in, a pair of strikeouts for Womack as well. One in the second, one in the fifth. Takes the ball low and out. You expect, Bobby, pitchers and catchers to have the best understanding of the strike zone because they're the ones that are dealing with it the most on the other yep. side. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, you, you can establish yourself the strike zone. You know what's been called. You can kind of keep that in the back of your head, and it's just kind of natural. And by right there, that's that's been a strike all day. But again, she doesn't think she can do anything with it. That's a pitch that you can take early in the count. But if that's a 1-2 count, that's something you got to swing at. Sounded like that pitch had a little bit more velocity behind it as well, a little bit more pop as it made contact with the glove. The 1-1. One, one. Skied. And it is going to stay on the infield as. Oh, good play. The course correction <laughs> at the last second. Kinsley Ward able to hold on. Nearly got away from her, but just at the last second able to reel it back in. Kind of see that one waffling in the air a little bit. She's ranging to her right. It's the last minute, maybe dives back to her left, but a great play to stay with it and makes the play. Even if we had a 45-minute review like they do at the big leagues, <laughs> that's still a catch. I would agree that it's definitely a catch. Would, would stand up to a review as there are two away now in the top of the seventh inning. First pitch swing fell back to the screen as Riley Eakins. Eakins, a pair of strikeouts as well. As has been the story for both Riverside and Mansfield throughout the majority of this game. For the Tigers, trying to get out of this inning, get back into the dugout, try and tie this game. Fouled back into the screen as Edwards works ahead in the count 0-2. The game plan for Edwards has been consistent. She's been really good throughout 14 strikeouts, now 15 strikeouts, including the one here in the seventh. 286 on the season. She is not disappointed today. 0-2. Hammered foul down the left field line. That's probably the best struck ball that Riverside has had today. Yep. One of the, also another one of the few times that Edwards has come inside. Uh, Riverside has not been able to keep one fair, but I like that she does it just often enough to keep those hitters from diving out all over that outside corner. Keeps you honest. The 0-2. Just missed low and out. Bobby, at some point, do you think about working in the changeup here? We haven't seen it in the last inning yeah. and a half. As quickly as she turned on that inside fastball, it's probably not a bad idea. So try to change speeds. Edwards trying to get out of the inning. 
Setting down Riverside in order. The one, two. Foul tip just out of the glove of Adams and Eakins will live to see another pitch. You can feel the tension here at Ferris Field, a one nothing game in the 2A state championship game between Riverside and Mansfield. One, two. Cut on and miss strike number three. That will do it for Riverside in the top of the seventh. But Mansfield down to their final three outs. The Tigers will try and tie this game as we come to bat here in the bottom of the seventh inning. You are watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. He was a Chinese immigrant who created his own century-long American dream. It was really a lot of fun. If a lot of people put their mind to it, they can win. These are stories about what it meant to be resilient. It's a tale of triumphs and tragedies, of incredible invention and creativity. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. For students, it's always more fun to include the arts when you're learning. I mean, just to have expression, to see different forms of entertainment, it always just makes it more fun. And when I heard that my mother was recording different sections that teachers were going to see, I was excited for the students who will get to use it in their classroom. Arkansas PBS is a place where everyone can see themselves, where everyone can find themselves, where everyone can be a part of something bigger than themselves. For a copy of any of the state championship games, go to mmproductions.net to place your order. Now this game between Riverside and Mansfield would certainly be one to go back and watch. This has been a fun one throughout, but now the Tigers down to their final three outs, trying to win their first state championship since 2012. Riverside trying to hold on for their first state title in program history. Smith, Allison, Chick do up for Mansfield. First pitch swinging down the right field line, but foul. And one point to note, that was Skylin Harris that struck out to end the sixth inning. Allison Edwards given the intentional walk. So that is why Cole Smith is leading things off. Smith has struck out looking twice today. As and that outside pitch that Smith has, has watched go by for a called third strike both times. So she's got to look for that. It was all over the first one that she fouled down the right field line. Takes a ball high in the zone. And Bobby, you've talked a lot about changing the mentality, changing your approach down to your final three outs against a pitcher that as a team you've struggled against. What do you do here to try and get on? you, you got to do anything you can, to be quite honest. And, and one, make sure she's throwing your strikes. I really like the approach of swinging first pitch. But you know that she's going to want to get ahead, talking about Claire Womack. You come out and swing, and now you kind of settle into this at bat. Now you get yourself ahead in the count, 2-1. And now you can sit fastball on that outer third. The 2-1 comes on the outside corner. It's a called strike. 16 strikeouts through six complete innings for Claire Womack. And another one here on the outside corner. That's a pretty pitch. Swung on and missed. Out number one as Riverside two outs away now. That's the pitch we expected her to get, you know, up and out. That fastball, she just couldn't elevate and couldn't catch up to it. And another punch out, 16 now for Claire Womack. Both these pitchers with 16 strikeouts. Natalie Allison takes a ball outside. Allison 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a pop out to the shortstop as the numbers for Womack. 97 pitches, 17 strikeouts through six and a third. And that's a called strike on the outside corner. Just find a way to get on base. And Allison takes the first pitch there. Whether it's laying down a bunt, whether it's finding a hole in the infield or drawing a walk, got to find some way to get the tying run on base. Put into play. That is in shallow center field, but Qualls is coming on to make the catch. And so now Riverside with two outs away in the bottom of the seventh. Tigers down to their final out. 
And Serenity Chick will step to the plate. Chick over to a pair of strikeouts. First pitch swinging. As Womack continues to pound the strike zone. Yeah, I like the aggressive approach there. That one likely would have, would have called a strike. Again, now protect the outer third. Good eye. Ball taken low. Evens the count at one and one. Now, if you're if you're Womack in this Riverside defense, you've got to settle down because you know they're feeling it. They know they're just two strikes away from their first ever state championship. You've got to go out and complete the task. Last out is the hardest out to get. Found back into the screen, one, two. And so now the Tigers, who were walked off by Tuckerman in 2021 in the state final, down to their final strike. As Chick trying to battle here against Claire Womack, who has been superb inside the circle. One, two. That stays high. A little bit of adrenaline behind that one. A little one. bit, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and you know, as, as well as she's pitched today, she wants to end this game on a strikeout. Oh, yeah. So she's probably digging deep and wanting to let everything go and maybe throw a little extra oomph on that because a punch out here would just cap off a great day. The count full now at three and two. Those last two really look like she tried to overthrow. I would agree. Womack looking to punctuate this state championship with a strikeout. She has 17 so far today. Chick, the three-two, swung on and missed for strike three. As Riverside captures their first state championship in program history, behind a gem from Claire Womack, 18 strikeouts and a complete game victory. It's utter dominant performance. 18 of the 21 outs recorded by Riverside come via the strikeout and. Uh, Claire Womack's got to be your MVP. We'll find out about that in just a little bit, but an outstanding performance for her to come out and completely shut down a, a really, really good Mansfield offense. The Riverside Lady Rebels are your 2A state champions. We are going to take a quick break, but we will be right back for the trophy presentation right here on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Want to see even more Arkansas stories? Subscribe to Arkansas PBS on YouTube for original productions, extras from your favorite local programs, behind the scenes videos, and our exclusive coverage of high school sports. All available on demand and all Arkansas made. Don't miss out on more great Arkansas stories. Subscribe now. Arkansas, what's in your attic? Find out what your heirlooms, antiques, and unique collectibles are worth. Join us for the filming of a brand new show. Arkansas Treasures. Your contribution of $120 admits you and a guest to bring two items to our team of professional appraisers for an evaluation at a special event in the Arkansas PBS studios. And if your item and story are selected for filming, you may end up on our show. Additionally, your contribution gets you a one-year membership to Arkansas PBS, including our monthly member magazine and access to PBS Passport, where you can stream thousands of hours of incredible PBS content. This special special event happens on August 5th and 6th in Conway. Tickets will go quickly, so guarantee your spot by calling now or visiting our website. Simply scan the QR code with your phone. Your treasure may be worth more than you know. Welcome back to Ferris Field, where Riverside has just won their first state championship in program history. one nothing over Mansfield. A moment these players have been waiting for their entire lives as the Lady Rebels take it one nothing thanks to an 18 strikeout gem by Claire Womack and an RBI single by Mackenzie Thomas to play Anna Lee Qualls in the top of the sixth inning. What a game this was, Bobby. Here, I mean, we knew that with the two dominant pitchers between Claire Womack and Allison Edwards, it was runs were going to be at a premium, base runners were going to be rare. 
Uh, but I don't think that either you, I, or anybody watching this contest would have expected how dominant these two pitchers were. But Womack's stuff was just a little bit better. Riverside came up with a timely hit. So this, this pitching matchup is, is going to be remembered as one of the better state championship duels in some time. It's been a, one of the best pitching duels I've seen regardless of level, maybe ever. 16 strikeouts for Edwards, 18 strikeouts for Womack as Riverside comes away with their first state title in program history. And Bobby, you said it, it's a shame that somebody had to lose this game. Yeah, I mean, and Mansfield's had a tough year as far as female sports. If you want to feel sorry for a team that's got two runner-ups. <laughs> uh, but obviously, they, uh, they they ran into two really good teams, once in volleyball and now here in softball. It's just Womack was so good in the circle and, and one inning is, is really what it came down to. A couple of, you know, a bleeder of a single and then an RBI single uh, that gave them the lead, and that was the difference. No surprise, Claire Womack named the MVP. And take a look at the pitching comparison here today between Allison Edwards and Claire Womack. Womack, 18 strikeouts, only gave up two hits, three base runners the entire game. And meanwhile, Allison Edwards, 16 strikeouts in the loss. Yeah, it's, it's just dominant performance. 34 combined strikeouts. The pitch numbers were total, just the one hit extra allowed by Edwards, which which led to the one run. Uh, it's 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 a a, a gym. I mean, honestly, it was a great matchup to watch between these two teams. And I mentioned it earlier, it's disappointing that one of these had to lose. Uh, and unfortunately for Mansfield and Edwards, it was them. You see how even the numbers are. 106 total pitches for both Allison Edwards and Claire Womack as the 2A state title belongs to the Riverside Lady Rebels. We are just getting started here today on Arkansas PBS Sports. We've got more softball action coming up for you from Ferris Field. But we are going to take a look at this game. And spoiler alert, there's going to be a lot of strikeouts. Yeah, yeah. that's about all there was. There wasn't many hits to be found, even fewer base runners. Uh, these two pitchers earned the spotlight. They deserve the recognition. Uh, it's, it's really all you can say. I know we sound like a broken record talking about <laughs> how good they were, but I mean, that's how dominant they were. The ball was rarely put into play. And so Edwards, Womack, they are certainly deserve this recognition in the spotlight. One of the most dominant pitching performances that you will see on both sides between Claire Womack and Allison Edwards, a combined 34 strikeouts between the two starting pitchers, the Womack and the Riverside Lady Rebels coming away with the one nothing victory for their first ever state title. Riverside ends the year 25 and four, while Mansfield ends the year 28 and four. Now the 2A state title game lived up to its billing. We have more ahead. The 4A softball state championship between P Ridge and Gravett coming up just around 4 o'clock. Bobby and I will be with you from Ferris Field. We hope you'll join us. We'll see you soon right here on Arkansas PBS Sports.